Welcome to another episode of She Unleashed. She Unleashed is, of course, the podcast that is directed to corporate women, is directed to entrepreneurs that are looking to pivot in what they're doing. We are here to supply you with toolkits. We are here bringing you the global women who have on the journey and have succeeded in what they're doing. Today, we have an amazing speaker and the topic we will be talking about is leaving footprints. We have to be the women that when we leave Earth, we have left legacies for our children and our children's children. She is one phenomenal woman who has done just that. In her already young age, she has launched a book. She has authored a book called um, Disruptor, Be Disrupted or Be a Disruptor. And she'll correct me if I'm wrong then. She's a speaker. She's called on multiple platforms globally to speak about disruption. She is also a winner of the top 50 global thought leaders on disruption. Nikki Vert is just an amazing, awesome woman to know. And she's quite known in the spaces of ICT because she speaks about the emerging trends. Nikki, it is awesome to have you on board. Welcome to She Unleashed. Thank you so much, Fungsa. That was a beautiful introduction. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Nikki, you are just a wonder to watch. And I have been tracking your progress and just the things that you are getting up, you know, um, involved in and globally. You engaging with globally global thought leaders on emerging trends. Who is Nikki and what inspired Nikki to follow the emerging trends and disruption? Wow, thanks. That is a great question. Um, I usually tell the story and I remember telling someone that I will never really get used to this story. You know, it's, it's a story that each time I tell it takes me by surprise, like, wow, how did I really get here? You know, so back in 2016, I was uh, very much still in the corporate world mm -hmm. and I did not, I did not anticipate things to change for me the way it did but one day my boss called me in for a meeting and and I was sure that they would have to let me go you know changes are happening within the organizations and they had decided you know months prior to that meeting that that they were to let me go and so that was the, the day they told me about it and when I left that day it hit me like like a train moving on high speed for lack of words and to say it was one of the most devastating news that I heard you know at that time you know would actually be an understatement I had no no idea how to even process it because I had this idea at the back of my mind that I had signed a permanent contract of employment you know retrenchment or layoff was not it wasn't at the back of my mind I wasn't even thinking about it and uh, on another side, I thought that layoffs or retrenchments were for all, uh, all the people. You know, I thought I'm too young for this, so I'm safe, right? Mm -hmm. So it was a naive way of thinking, of course, but nonetheless, that's how I was thinking. That was my mindset at the time. So I was angry. I was frustrated. I, I went through all sorts of emotions. Uh, but as the... As time went on and I began to, you know, this furious me be began to calm down, I started asking the questions as to like, what is driving, you know, retrenchments and layoffs at this fast rate? Because after my retrenchment, uh, it became like when you buy a car, then you start seeing that particular make of car everywhere. So after I got laid off, every time I turned on TV or the radio or the news I was hearing was about retrenchment. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, I'd never paid attention to that happening on the news. And so it became to me now like, oh, so I am not the only person. So many people are being retrenched, you know, mm -hmm. from the financial industry to the mining industry to, you know, everything. And I became very curious as to, how can an organization let go, for example, you know, say 2,000 employees in the space of like three years and they're still surviving, you know, what is keeping the organization afloat? I thought people were the lifeblood of any organization. And if so many people can leave, 
and an organization keeps thriving, something has to be keeping, you know, this organization in place. Those were the my, those were the questions at the back of my mind. And I wanted to find the answers as to what was keeping these organizations afloat after they let go so many people. So I throw myself in the belly of the internet to find the answers for myself. I had no intention of sharing this with anyone. I just wanted to satisfy my, my curiosity, right? Mm -hmm. So as my research pros progressed, I started realizing that because whatever I was finding out, I was writing it on social media, I would post on Facebook, and I discovered that a lot of people were also curious as to my findings, which brought me some sort of comfort that I was not the only clueless person about this. So I went even more and more deeper into that. And so in like early 2017 or so, words like artificial intelligence started jumping on me. You know, the fourth industrial revolution started jumping on me, robotics and all of this. Those were words and terminologies that I had no clue what they were. And prior to being retrained, I did not know what they were. I had no interest in technology prior to being retrained. I have no background in IT, and I am not even an academician by any stretch of imagination, right? So I don't even have a degree. Mm -hmm. So uh, when all of that began to happen, I the more clueless I was, the more curious I wanted to know. So rather than run away, like, I don't know what these things are, so I'm done. It's confusing. Mm -hmm. I just went in deeper and deeper to understand the impact of artificial intelligence. What is this all about? Okay, let's look at the whole fourth industrial revolution thing. What is this all about? If there's a fourth, then there's, there was a third, and there was a second, and there was a first. So I went with my research all the way back to the first industrial revolution to understood mm -hmm. what that was and how we came to this point, right? So back to my curiosity, then I learned that um, machines are now replacing people at work. You know, automation is now the norm, which is what those are things I didn't know about. You know, organizations are doing more with less employees. So those are the things now. And now finally, I had the answer to my curiosity. OK, when so many people go, you know, uh, these processes that were being done by humans become automated. It's like, okay, now I know. But then I could not stop there. Writing then became like therapy for me because I was still going through a lot of pain and all of that. So I kept writing and putting it on social media. So the response from social media made me realize that so many people also want to understand what these trends are, what these new technologies and the impacts are. And so it evolved into a blog I was like, okay, let me take it one step up. I started blogging about it, writing now full articles instead of just short posts on social mm -hmm. media. And so from social media, it evolved into that blog post and then it evolved into a book because at mm -hmm. one point I felt like, I think this information should be put in a book form, which I didn't think it would be me. So I, was like, I think you have to be very smart to write a book, right? And mm -hmm. in terms of being smart, I was like, I don't think I qualify. So in my mind, I was like, oh, I wish somebody can write a book about this. That was what I was wishing. And as days progress, there's this voice at the back of my mind, like, but you are the one talking about this. So write a book. I was like, no. <laughs> so, but as time progressed, I realized that the thought of writing a book would not leave me. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, when, when, when something gets into your system, the only cure for you would be to do it. So the only cure for me is to read the well was to get the book out so I just started compiling um, uh, my, my, my findings into a book and eventually the book came out which is in answering your question how I got into the path in which I am today mm -hmm. literally I tell people sometimes this was by default I didn't plan this <laughs> so you've 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 dispelled one notion that says that people need to have prior experience ICT to have an interest in emerging technologies. What can you tell other women who are just so far removed from emerging trends? Because you know what, you, you, want, you, you get concerned because when you look at blockchain, it's like an emerging platform where trade is going to be quite significant. And if you are removed from those and the, you know, the e-commerce systems, you just, you know, creating a further gap of being left behind. What can you tell women that are fearful to take the bold stages that you, you, you've, you've, you've taken? And I think with you as well, it took probably an event or an incident for you to start being interested and involved. What can you tell them about your journey of finding out? I think you, you've spoken a lot about it, 
but is it as difficult as it actually appears? <laughs> I think it's, it's a matter of, yes, it is difficult. I will have to admit that it is mm -hmm. difficult, not as the process in itself, but the, the most difficult part is the unlearning you have to do mm -hmm. you know, with yourself. Which I, which I did with myself. Like, like I mentioned about me disqualifying myself and writing the book, I wasn't for this, tech is not for me and all of that. Mm -hmm. These were the voices in my head. And I think the most difficult part was having to undo all these um, ideas that I don't belong in this space. This is a space for men. This is a space for IT experts. This is a space for people who are educated. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you, you're coming here with no degree, no background in technology, and you want to talk about this. So it took a lot of time and a lot of work with my mindset to overcome that alone. Mm -hmm. And I believe that a lot of people will probably feel like I did you know, where your greatest enemy is not someone out there, your greatest enemy is not even the system, it's you. Mm -hmm. It's how you think and it's how you see yourself. Because trust me, if someone had told me uh, maybe just five, six years ago that I would be here, I, like I would literally laugh and be like, <laughs> like really, <laughs> you know, write a book. I, I didn't think I had that in me. And then it's just, just a book. It's a, talking about emerging technologies. I thought that kind of stuff was for IT technicians, right? IT experts or technology experts. So the greatest work for me and the, the message that I would give to any woman listening is that the work has to be first within yourself, you know, before you even go out there to try to see if the system can give you an enabling environment. You have to first do the work with yourself and with your mindset to convince yourself that, you know what, I can do this. The resources are already out there. There is so much information on the internet you know, that you can learn. I am an example of that. I learned all that I learned via the internet regarding uh, uh, disruption, innovation, emerging technologies, and all of that. I learned it on the internet on my own. So you will have to get the work, the initial work, which is within yourself, done before you even, because a lot of us get straight to fighting the system. Oh, the government is this, the government is that, you know, mm. this is, the, and, and all the policies and all of that. But we forget that we need to ready ourselves mentally for for what we are asking for you know mm -hmm. so i think you, you you're leading to powerful statements um nikki one of them is um what you think you also need someone else needs it out there and that i think that was the basis of you writing the book that you know what if there's this response from the blog surely there are a lot of other people that are actually needing and sometimes we always think that to write a book, you have to exactly the statements that you're making. You have to be intelligent. You have to be specialist in, 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 in this project. What can you teach other women about recognizing that there is always a legacy to leave in the spaces that we're in? Because we tend to keep whatever experience that we have. And your journey shows that whatever experiences I have, I can actually put them out there because there's someone who is looking for exactly what I've just found. Absolutely. As you were asking the question, I remember, I can't remember who actually uh, the, the quote is, is attributed to, but it says that every person has a book in them. Mm -hmm. They will decide if they can put it out in the world or they take it to the grave. I think it's Miles Monroy, mm -hmm. the late Miles Monroy. I think he's the, he's the one I, I heard that quote from. Mm -hmm. And it, it shifted something within me because with me, when this voice is in my head that being an author was not my thing, wasn't for me, I was just messed up, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, when I heard that, I was like, if everyone has a book in them, and now I'm in this point where I feel like I have one, so I can do it. So, you know, to the women that are, you know, at the conflicting stage, it's, it's, it's to know that you have something in you. It might not necessarily be a book, you know, mm -hmm. but there's always something in each and every one of us that was put in us, you know, by the divine, by the creator, by God. And if you are courageous, I think that's the word, if you are courageous enough to, to dare to try, you'll be surprised at the places you can go and you'll be surprised at your own self, the, the potential that lies within you that you are not really paying attention to, you know. Mm -hmm. I personally, I am not where I want to be, but I know that I've only scratched you know, the, the, the potential that God placed in me, you know, I am not yet there, but nonetheless, I am not where I was, even mm -hmm. mentally and emotionally and just everything else. 
Now I have a book out there. Even if this was the one thing that I leave behind, I think that the world will, will be impacted even when I am no longer here with my writings and my, my sharing my thoughts and my and the way I see the world and the way I see, you know, technology with the world, that is something that will always keep giving even when I am no longer here. And I am actually very particularly very passionate about, you know, legacy and keeping something behind, you know, because I believe that we all came here to fulfill a purpose. We didn't just, we didn't just come here to eat, have a nice house, a nice car, and then return back to the creator, right? Mm -hmm. There's a purpose for which we were sent here on earth. And what is that purpose is a question that many are yet to answer for themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, mine, mine jumped on me. Like I'm saying, I had no idea. I, had, I, I didn't know I, was, I had capacity to write. Uh, but nonetheless, life threw what it threw at me. And one thing led to another. The dots connected at the, at the, at the, at the end. And this is, this is the path in which I am now, which I totally enjoy. I love what I do. And so for many people, sometimes it would take chaos for you to discover your purpose. Sometimes it would take pain for you to discover your purpose. Sometimes it would take, you know, uh, uh, sickness even for you to discover your purpose. There has to be some sort of unraveling sometimes for some people to discover their purpose. But for others, their purpose is hanging on the fridge every day, looking at them, you know, that thing they wrote and hang there, it's there, you know. <laughs> and for others, is that voice in their head, you know, that idea that keeps coming back even after 10 years, 20 years, 40 years, you have not been able to let go of that idea you had 20 years ago. That is your purpose, mm -hmm. you know? So you can't say you don't know, it's just you don't have the courage to try, to step out and try. For others, they completely don't know. And when live events happen, be, be, be vigilant, be attentive. Your antennas should be up to see, okay, what is life teaching me in mm -hmm. this moment? You know, where is the path leading me in this moment? And you never know, it just might lead you into your purpose like it did for me. Mm -hmm. So it's about trusting the process, right? Because you never know where trusting the process. That is the word. Trusting the process, absolutely. Absolutely. Now tell me about the journey, Nikki. It can never be all about the rosy part. That there was, you know, the poor. Of course. The poor. Surely take me through the part. Surely there were lots of naysayers who were saying things that could have stopped you, you know, from 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 going through. Because once you start something. It's amazing how everybody all of a sudden becomes a specialist that can tell you what and what you shouldn't do. Did you experience the same? Of course, I did. I did. You know, the, the doubts that doesn't come only from within yourself, but from people outside. You know, people look at you like, I think the job, losing her job really messed her up because she's on this path. We don't understand what's going on. You know, family is like, get, get another job, you know, forget about this, get another job. Just think about the kids, go back to work. And within me, after I experienced the pain of being retrenched, as much as it was really hurtful, I told myself that I think I will try to make it on my own. Mm -hmm. I, I will not try to go back into the corporate world because mm -hmm. to be honest, I was not happy with what I was doing. Mm -hmm. But when I started writing and it became some sort of therapeutic for me, I really love doing that. I really enjoy doing that. The response from social media and the way people were impacted with my findings and my writing, that was the feeling I wanted to keep. And I know that going back into the corporate world will steal that away from me. So I wanted to stay on that path to experience that joy, you know, to experience that fulfillment. And the fact that I, in my own little way, could impact someone. You know, even though I was dead broke, I was as broke as the Ten Commandments Moses dropped when he came down the mountain. But you know what? The joy of just having to see that what I am doing had meaning in someone else's life, it kept me going. Mm -hmm. You know, that alone kept me going. And that was a feeling that a salary at the end of the month never gave me, even though I was secure in that. Okay, month and something is coming for But the feeling and the fulfillment I felt having nothing just but just impacting people was much more something I would rather hold on to rather than a paycheck. Mm -hmm. So that was how I was able to, you know, transition and do all of that. With the naysayers, each time I heard a negative comment, I had to choose between feeling fulfilled and fulfilling other people's desires and dreams 
for, for myself. So I had to choose what fulfilled me rather than take a path that will fulfill someone else. They will be happy, but I will be miserable. You know, I can make my family happy by having a particular job. I'll ask some advice. I should go back to school. I would make them very happy, but I would be miserable. So I had to choose with what really gave me fulfillment, what I could go to bed at night with a smile on my face, knowing that I am not failing the world. I am not failing in my purpose. So those kept me going. Mm -hmm. So I like what you're saying, because normally it is actually the very closest people that we are looking for for support when we're studying something new. And those are the very same people that actually, they don't realize the words, the power of the words, and the fact that you're trusting them, that they have the best interest. But like then again, the fact that people have not traveled the journey, we, it gives you some grace of saying, you know what, maybe they don't understand what I'm going through and they don't understand uh, where I'm headed because you normally feel, it's exactly what you're saying, it's a people's thing, you feel it and no one else can tell you. The most amazing thing, Nikki, is you are highly rated. On LinkedIn, you have amazing followership. You speak on world stages. And for a person who says that I started on in 2015 or 2016, it's amazing where it has led you to. And it can only be really a purpose-driven kind of thing to be where you at at this moment. How does it feel? What is the fulfillment you get right now? see where you are as much as you're saying it's not where I want to be but just the journey of saying Nikki world-renowned author she gets called to speak about disruption and, and and all of those things how does it feel um it's exciting and scary at the same time <laughs> so I have to be honest with that it's an exciting feeling that wow I did something that the world recognizes right Mm -hmm. that's one feeling on the other side then the scary part is what if I am not able to maintain this mm -hmm. what if you know what if all of these what ifs mm -hmm. and so that is the scary part but I guess it comes with the package it comes with the path on which you you, you chose those mm -hmm. the, those conflicting emotions mm -hmm. are always there but then when you know and you believe in what you are doing you don't lean too much on the what ifs part you, you follow and you build on the success you've started on. So I'm looking to build on that success that I have started on. And, and yeah, <laughs> I'm looking to build on that success. It's exciting, to be honest, but scary at the same time. It's amazing. What keeps Nikki balanced? Because Nikki is forever literally um, a content creator, always out there, always doing something. What keeps you balanced and already? Because I cannot fathom that every day you wake up so inspired and you want to conquer the next thing i'm sure you've got your down days what keeps you grounded that is why i love mm. yeah that is literally why i love because there is a social media persona which people see and they kind of assume that this person is always on this energy you know 24 7 which is not true mm -hmm. and i'm usually very open about my journey and I have shared a whole lot of vulnerable moments that most people would never share online but I wish I could share more you know because there are days you feel like you, you don't want to do anything you know that days you you feel really down you feel uninspired that's the word you you, you feel a lot of emotions and when those days come I embrace it mm -hmm. I embrace it like this this is part of life yep yep if, yeah. If, if I, I don't I don't build a tent there though I don't but I, I recognize it mm -hmm. I'm feeling at this point and I'm going to allow myself feel this I don't want to push the emotion aside I don't want to push this feeling aside to pretend like everything is okay because positivity can become toxic to yourself and to other people if you keep painting this picture that you are always this person who is on cloud nine 24 seven. That is, that is not true, you know? Mm -hmm. And that is why I share my, my failures. I share, I share, you know, the things I have been able to share, put on, 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 on LinkedIn, even on YouTube mm -hmm. about my journey, because I believe that if more people can share about their struggles, less people will be depressed. You know, because I don't want people looking at me on social media on my good day and assuming this is how she's always, you know, and, and wishing they were like that. Mm -hmm. I want you to see me on that good day and then go back and 
read a post I spoke about when I was feeling, you know, all sort of emotions, even feeling suicidal, watch a video like that. And you will realize that there's no balance here. You actually asked about balance and I laugh because I don't think there's balance. <laughs> I just think you have a, a day that you're really high energy and a day you're really down. You just mm-hmm. manage, you just manage on, 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 on those days and those emotions. You find the grace to go through each, you know, as it comes. But in terms of balance, I, I, I doubt, I wouldn't say I have balance. Mm-hmm. What matters the most to Nikki at this stage? So here and now, uh, at some point, it was important to get the book out. It was important to get maybe the name out and, you know, the blogs, the, the responses and, and all of those things. What is important to you now, now that you've achieved certain, you know, milestones? It's to keep building on that. It's to keep building on, on you know, on what I've started. Like, I feel like I'm still at the very beginning of my journey. Mm -hmm. So what really matters to me is to build on that. I literally just started working on the second book, you know, to build on the first. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's really important for me to build on what I started. I don't want to become complacent. Mm -hmm. I don't want to feel like I have arrived. Mm -hmm. I still have a whole life ahead of me and a long life ahead of me. And there is just so much to be done, particularly on the continent. I'm very passionate about Africa, mm-hmm. you know, to, in terms of shifting mindsets, in terms of letting the youth, you know, know we, we can do this, you know, mm-hmm. and just inspiring the next generation of, 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 of African men and, and women is something I'm very passionate about. So the journey has barely begun for me. I, I look very much forward in having a positive impact throughout the continent, you know, in terms of our abilities as a continent, in terms of um, shifting mindsets and, and impacting people to rise, to understand that if Africa will be the future that everyone talks about, it is upon us to make that happen. We don't have to look, you know, to the West, we don't have to look to the Europeans, but we can arise and, and start building this continent. We have a continent to build and I want to be part of that. You know, I want to be part of changing the African narrative. I want to be part of, uh, of, of touching lives across the continent. And that is something that I want many people, I want to impact that in, many, in as many people as possible, not just women, but the young people as well, young girls, young boys growing up, to let them understand that it is possible for us to build our own innovations, for us to even build our own technologies that will solve our own unique problems on the continent. That is the kind of impact and inspiration and really what matters to me. Wow, Nikki, you've given us more than we've actually bargained for because you're such an open spirit and you are quite a very open and sharing person. What I like about the conversation is that you make it very real, that anyone can do what you've done. And it takes uh, it can take a number of triggers to get to where you are. But you've made it real and you've made it so impactful in someone who is at home right now who thinks I can't do it because Obviously, I'm not, um, maybe they will think I'm not uh, every day, you know, uh, disciplined to do this thing. You, you've made it simple to say it's not about discipline. You'll have your days, you'll have your, whatever, your, your, your other days where you're feeling down. But as long as you have a focus and you have a legacy building, three things that you can tell, you can, you can leave us with as uh, pearls of wisdom for the ladies. What are those? Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> this has to be specific for ladies? It doesn't have to be ladies. I suppose it can be broader than ladies. Okay. In terms, in regards to disruption, one of the things that I spoke about in my book, uh, which the title is Disrupt Yourself or Be Disrupted. I, I heard you mixing it up uh, in, during the introduction. <laughs> so it is Disrupt Yourself or Be Disrupted. And one of the highlights in the book that I mentioned is that... Mm-hmm. We or you and I cannot, we cannot stop emerging technologies. Mm -hmm. We cannot stop an economic recession. We cannot stop these things from happening. Mm -hmm. But what we can do is to direct the kind of impact Mm -hmm. and influence it will have in our own life, right? Mm -hmm. I couldn't stop retrenchment from happening to me, but Mm -hmm. I kind of redirected on the kind of impact it had on me. Mm -hmm. So that is one thing I could you know leave to the ladies that you cannot stop change you cannot mm-hmm. stop disruption mm-hmm. but you can you you, you 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 can decide on how it impacts you 
Mm-hmm. And and the second thing would be, you know, listen to that nagging feeling. You know, this comes in terms of purpose. You know, because each and every one of us who are not yet operating in our purpose, there is always that nagging feeling mm-hmm. about something. Like I mentioned earlier, some people's purpose is literally hanging on their fridge and they're not doing anything about it. Mm-hmm. So that nagging feeling, pay attention to it, listen to it. And something will come out of it if you are bold enough, courageous enough to just take the first step. Trust the process. Don't even bother about how the dots we connect, when the dots we connect. We didn't even have enough time for me to tell you how I had no clue how I was going to publish this book. I had no money. I had nothing. All I knew was that if I can get this book together, it will come out somehow. And it did. You know, so so the third thing leading to that would be... uh, Provision does not proceed, you know, your vision. Because a lot of people want to do things and they want to have the resources put together first. They want to have the entire family say yes to it first. They want to have the government sponsorship first. They want to have private sectors gathering and sponsoring them first. But that is not how life works, Mm -hmm. you know. Usually provision comes after you have stepped out. Resources comes after you have stepped out. So for someone who has a dream and they don't know how to go about it, be resourceful, become resourceful. It is there uh, a process in you know, learning that you need to do like I did for myself. Start with yourself. Start changing your mindset. Start changing how you see yourself. Start getting information about that particular business or particular, particular project you want to get into. Start getting that kind of information on the internet. It's free. You don't need sponsorship for that. Start understanding how your customers in this particular business you want to get into. How do they respond? How do they behave? Understand customer behavior. Understand customer service in that particular area of business you want to get into. That is not something you need sponsorship for. But rather, many people will sit and not do the initial work. All they need is a big bag of money to be able to start their projects. But the reality is that for those who have the money to even start up initially, you realize that money just covers a whole lot of problems Mm -hmm. that you will only realize later. But if you start by bootstrapping yourself, you will be able to recognize those problems so that by the time the money comes, it will be put in a very good use. It won't be wasted. So rather than focusing on the resources first, become resourceful by empowering yourself, by understanding your market niche, by understanding what is it you want to do. So those would be my three tips. Absolutely. And I love it because it speaks to really most of the stories that we've read about where people have built legacies. They've started with nothing. Yet we have a notion of always thinking funding for this and all of those things. Yet there's more belief in seeing something that is existing. If it's a concept, at least we can see there's proof that this concept will work. Or there's a book, there's a transcript that we can publish. And then people start moving and directing you know, themselves towards how they can help you and assist you to publish this book. Nikki, this was such an eye-opening uh, interview. And thanks for the authenticity, thanks for the realness, and thanks for sharing your story, because it will really trigger an action for someone who's been maybe waiting and waiting for the push. Hopefully, we hope for most women who are in corporate environment, don't get the similar push. I mean, they have all the time, at least, and the resources that you can have, unlike your case where you had to find yourself outside of the job. Thank you so much for sharing, and it's always a pleasure to you because you are inspiring and you are an amazing lady.